All right, folks, welcome back to Crimeology. Chief Kirk, here, I want to talk to you a little bit today about our third installment, uh, video installment, of the concept of defending handgun behind the elbow. So in installment number one, we talked about redirection. We talked about what to do and not do. In installment number two, we talked about the role that soft knees play in getting you in. Today, I want to talk to you a little bit about constant directional pressure, the role the thumb plays in that, as ironic as that sounds, and also how we deliver ourselves into a powerful control position, delivering a powerful combative in this context. So stay tuned, I know it's gonna be helpful. Installment three, uh, hang up behind the elbow, lots of things to cover. In um, installment one, we talked about the redirection of the handgun and the importance of looking with the shoulder. Installment two, we talked about how to set up with soft knees for the entry. Today we're gonna to talk about the actual entry and what my thumb does and things to avoid to deliver you to a control position with a powerful strike to finish this technique off. So, all right, um, we've talked about redirection. Elbow here only, sliding across my pants with my fingers. Two, I open up my thumb. One of the things I'm gonna ask Trey to do as we go through this is I'm gonna ask him to put pressure back into me with the gun. So, put pressure. So if I release, he does this because the gun's pressing into me. Okay, so I made redirection. My right shoulder's looking. I'm sort of aligned with him at some level. I make um, soft knees, I'm gonna lift with the uh, hip flexor, and I'm gonna allow my thumb to point the direction. So as I lift, I do this, and I drive in. What Trey will tell you is that there was pressure pushing the hand, the gun hand, out the entire time. Is that true? It's true, okay. If you're not doing this, if you're not feeling this, if you're not running that drill or that exercise in class, you should. You should positively confirm that when you make redirection, that you are controlling the space around which or within which you enter to make a strike and go into control position, okay? So, I wanna show you two negative demonstrations I think it'll be helpful for you. Again, watch the gun. The first one is this. If I redirect, I turn, even if I turn properly, I don't set my feet correctly and lift with my hip flexor, what I will do and what people do is they'll get in, and they'll do this. Did you just see the gun move? I moved back to my right foot. I was here, to put weight in my right foot, I did that. The gun shifted to me and I shifted away from the gun. When the gun shifts back to you and you shift away from the gun, that's a recipe for disaster. Period. End of story, end of debate. Don't do it. Number two. A lot of people like to redirect, they get the shoulder looking correctly, they get the soft knees, everything's good. They're about to go in at the proper angle, they lift with their hip flexor, they drive in with their thumb, and what they do is they turn their palm up. Watch this. When I did that, the gun came in on me. Do not turn your palm up. You lost constant directional pressure. You're no longer controlling where the gun arm is going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna redirect, we're gonna look with our right shoulder, we're gonna set our angle up for entry, we're gonna point with our thumb, and my thumb is inside my arm, I have nice pressure in, Trey is pressing back. I'm softening my knees while I'm redirecting. I'm lifting with the hip flexor, I'm driving in off the, the toe, and I will push through with the thumb all the way to this position. Then my thumb will come up right behind the elbow and connect. Only at this point will I slide down with my palm making a, any kind of rotation. All right, we don't have like an hour to go through this. We could talk about it for a long time, but here's the, the deal. If you can hit the major points that we discussed today, you will be much more effective at this drill. But more importantly, take the concepts that we gave you today and we gave you last week and the week before and make sure you apply that thinking to everything you're doing in Krav Maga. It is not acceptable for you to not clearly understand why you're doing what you're doing. And if there's not a powerful explanation, don't do that thing. Lastly, you have to be able to develop a, a, a means of thinking so that you're able to look at Krav Maga videos and understand whether or not what you're looking at is dangerous or not, right? Sometimes when I talk about it, I say the word garbage, whether the video is garbage or not, but that's not really what it is. Is the video making you safer or increasing your risk as you move through the technique? You've got to take personal responsibility for that You've got to develop that way of thinking. I want to help you, but make sure you're thinking through what you're doing. Prove everything to yourself.
That concludes our third installment of sort of a discovery exploration of how we deal with handgun behind the left elbow. Right elbow is very similar with a couple of minor changes. Remember, we're redirecting with our arm, we're setting our body by looking with our shoulder, we're making our knees soft, we're driving in off our right foot by lifting with the left hip flexor, we're letting our thumb lead, we're connecting with our thumb, and we're making powerful counterattacks into a powerful control position. If you can do those things, your defense will be by a magnitude that you cannot imagine right now, much more powerful for you. But like I said, throughout these videos and other videos, don't take my word for it, train it, and prove it to yourself. Remember to drop down, send us questions, send us comments, remember to subscribe, and as always, walk in peace.